dollars, all that's accurate. If you broke, then you in hell, all that's accurate. Every day I got a grind, I can't relax a bit. Keep working, then you prevail, all that's accurate. I can't take no L's, all that's accurate. If you broke, then you in hell, all that's accurate. Every day I got a grind, I can't relax a bit. Keep working, then you prevail, all that's accurate. What's going on, everybody? I just want to give a huge thank you to Universal Property and Casualty Insurance as they continue to support our mission to inspire the next generation. We're back with another episode of Breaking Into Sports. Today, we have an amazing guest. This man, him and I have been working together for several years. He's a pioneer in the marketing space for athlete marketing and representation. He's actually our director of athlete partnerships in marketing at VMG Sports. I'm blessed to call him a friend, blessed to call him a brother. But nonetheless, we have Austin Specs Brooks joining us on the show today. Austin, how are you, man? What's going on, brother, man? I just want to say, number one, thank you for having me. You know, it's been a blessing to just be able to work with you and, and continue to grow every day together. You know, when it comes to this type of industry, you know, it's trying to find the right people, the right fit. You know, people that are loyal, do things the right way. Um, it, it could never, can't ask for anything better than that. 100%. And it's tough because this is an industry and we'll get into it a little bit today where there's a lot of shady people and a lot of shady stuff that goes on. It's gotten a bad name over the years, unfortunately, but I think, you know, for us, we try to be that small, bright light in that darkness and just try to spread that positivity. Now, I am going to say something before we get started, and I'm excited to say this right now, but Austin is now going to be the new co-host for Breaking Into Sports. This is his introduction to everyone, so you can know a little bit about him. But from this point on, Austin's co-hosting the episodes, man. So how do you feel about that? Man, I'm fired up, man. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's good for us to, you know, connect and, and you know, just to give our knowledge back to the, you know, just the different type of people that are growing within themselves and, you know, looking to get into this space in the sports industry, you know, just based off of our personal experience, or our growth, you know, our trials, our tribulations, you know, I, I think it's going to be an amazing dynamic between the two of us. You know, I'm a goofy guy, you know, you got it. So, yeah, you know, I think we're going to have tons of fun, connect with our guests, you know, and just try to bring as much relate relatability to this, you know, to the space as we can. And you said it best too, man, you know, trials and tribulations, everyone overcomes them. Everyone has them. I think they don't get highlighted enough because Instagram, everything's so pretty, you know, TikTok, everything's so pretty. Everybody wants to see the end destination and it's almost like you get there overnight, right? And and you and I both know, especially in this industry, it certainly doesn't work that way. So I want to kick things off just talking a little bit about your story, Austin, because you had, you know, not the clearest cut path to working in this industry or just professional life in general, right? You've had your trials, you had your tribulations, but that's made you into the person and the man that you are today. And the man that stands before a lot of these young athletes, particularly young men in the football space, where you get to become that role model. So just rewinding life, what was life like as a young Spex Brooks? Man, life, life was, uh, life was tough. You know what I mean? But I wouldn't trade it for the world. You know, I think, you know, as I growing up as a, as a young man, I'm South Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, born and raised, you know, just going, growing up, single mom, help from my Our grandparents. County. Our county, Florida, to the death of me, for sure. So, you know, I think just like in that aspect, you know, single mom, sports, you know, father figure really around, you know, I really gravitate, gravitated towards sports, just playing sports, being around it. You know, I didn't even really watch cartoons, to be honest. You know, I just, for whatever reason, I just knew I needed to be involved. Um, you know, I wasn't blessed with the, with the God given of being 6'2", being able to dunk, you know, throw 95 miles per hour. You know, but I, I was gifted enough with just, you know, the gap, right? You know, the word of mouth, the, the hard work, you know, just making sure I do everything to my best ability, you know, because I am I was never going to take no for an answer. You know, I mean, whether I was the smallest guy in the basketball court, you know, didn't throw the hardest on the baseball field or didn't run the fastest on the football field. But, you know, I prided myself of, you know, build, bringing those relationships, you know, around everywhere I go, right? You know, so, you know, I ended up growing up and, being around, you know, as you know, South Florida is a hub, right? Hub for sports. You know, some of my best friends in the whole world, you know, play tackle football. They, they went that route, especially when we go to high school and you, people start to elevate and separate themselves from the other as we're kids playing youth ball, you know? So for me, I had a lot of guys that just being around me that were going to go to that next level, maybe have that possibility, play division one ball. Um, and for me, I was just a funny guy on the side. You know what I mean? I'm going, showing love no matter what, same with my boys' parents. But, 
you know, so for me, like, as I started getting older and progress, you know, I knew I wasn't going to go pro, right? A big reality, you know, a lot of guys suffer from that, you know, not, not knowing, uh, you know, believing that they're going to make it pro no matter what, but that grind is so hard. But luckily, you know, I, I knew I wanted to get into a different realm. I wanted to hop into the business side. So, you know, I, when I chose a college, I went for my baseball scholarship at Point Park University in Pittsburgh. I decided I was going to research different types of schools and, you know, they're going to have a nice sports management program. And, you know, I wanted to get into that representation space. You know, I, I, re I remember being in middle school researching it and just being like, wow, man, I feel like I could really make an impact here. And then especially reading and seeing, you know, there could be dirty parts of the game, there's great parts of the game. But, you know, as I was going through, I wanted to get the, as much knowledge to my friends that might have had that possibility of going to pro ball after the college and just being able to just organically just give them any knowledge I picked up on until I got into the space myself, you know, telling them some pros and cons of the sports, of the agency game and, you know, what to look for, what not to look for, you know what I mean? Any type of knowledge I could pass on to them and just so they can make, make a great decision for themselves and their family, you know, whether obviously as I'm coming up, I'm interning and doing these different things. I wasn't in a spot to sign nobody, but being able to deliver that, the things I'm seeing, the things I'm learning that they're not focused on, that was the most important thing to me, you know, just in case so I would never want anybody to get, you know, screwed over in any type of way that was close to me. So any way I could help, that was what my goal was, right? You know, so I really took that seriously when I came through picking my college through my baseball scholarships of where is gonna be the best place for me to grow in this industry, learn from the right people and progress my career and my life. You know, just had a lot of, you know, tough times with family and growing up, they don't one of my best friends. You know, they took me in as, as a young man in high school and really just paved the way for me to, you know, to chase my dreams. And I'm forever thankful for them, for real. But, you know, it's, it's, it's different for everybody. Everybody's past gonna be a different way. But, you know, for me, it was just being as authentic as I can, you know, as real as I can, and I, and I believe that's what makes me stand out now to this day. You know, I'm the same, I'm the same guy that, that they had on the sidelines when we were 12, 13, 14 years old. I mean, I'm a little smarter, maybe a little better looking, but, <laughs> but no, we're, uh, we're, we're doing our thing, man. And I'm just forever grateful of what life brought me, you know, cause without that, I wouldn't be the man who I am, you know, cause I, I would never want something to just come to me easily. Cause I feel like, me having to go through hard times and, and take it on, on like a untraditional route has grown me and molded me to be able to handle anything. You know, you hear the phrase built different and uh, I really feel like that, you know what I mean? I don't mean it to be in a cocky way, but I just feel like nothing could really knock me off my pivot. 1000% dude. And I respect everything you've gone through and still to this day, because you still work harder than 98%, 99% of the people out there, right? Not just in this industry, but in life. And that's something I get to bear witness to. And I'm very blessed to see that, you know, every single day. And, you know, we just got back from a trip and just the grind that we put in, even on that short trip alone, right? Um, it's something that people don't really get to see. It's not something that really gets highlighted, but those sleepless nights and driving through the night and making it home at one, two in the morning just to wake up and five hours later and do another drive to get to somewhere else. That's the stuff people don't talk about. But for you, you know, it's, it's a blessing just as it is for me. Um, it's something that, you know, we're very grateful to get to be able to do that. A lot of people, I guess, you know, would pay to do as, as you said the other day, and you really put that into perspective in, in a great way, but also I got to give you a little bit of credit too, man. Cause you skipped over a part of your story that people don't realize Austin was a two time class clown champion, right? He was named class clown two times. But also, Austin, I want to touch on one more thing. And you talk about just that transition, right? And being realistic with yourself. And that was something you had to do. And that's something a lot of people struggle with. And the NCAA released some stats. I don't think people are aware of this, right? Only 8% of the top 1% of the top 1% end up playing in the NFL, right? From high school. Of 8% of the top 1% of the top 1%, right? And they released another stat that said only 1.6% of all college football players ever end up getting drafted. So of all the college players, all these different divisions, in D1 in particular, right, where you have all these different conferences, these Power 5 conferences, you take a look at that and you see 
wow, you know, only 1.6% of all of those, those athletes ever get drafted. So you do have to come to that realization. You came to it in a, in a positive light. So whenever you came to that, you know, what made you say, hey, all right, I've been around sports my whole life. I've come to this realization now where I'm not going to turn pro, even though it's been my dream. Why did you want to work in sports? You know, kind of just going back to what I said before, you know, I, I've always just been into sports, right? You know, it was just, you know, without, that was just my second home. I was on the field, on the court. And, you know, again, I go back to my closest friends, man. That, that's why I got into it. You know, I wanted to pave that way and specifically in the agent side for my closest friends to not get done wrong. You know, whether, whether they with me or not, it's any type of, you know, knowledge I bring to the table for them. And for me, it, it's a win-win, you know, that's all that matters. Right. Um, and then for my transition, it was just, just being real with myself, real with what I want, you know, and I took, I attacked that, that same transition as I attacked it all that I, when I was playing ball, you know? So, and that's my biggest thing. I'm, like I said, I'm going to go hard no matter what I do. So for me, it was just making sure, you know, I'm on point. I'm going to learn what I'm going to learn. And, you know, I, I, I find a quote, you know, it's, if I'm the smartest man in the room, I'm in the wrong room. Right. And, and I, I really pride myself on that and, and learn and just, I'm always wanting to learn, man. And that's the biggest thing, even with the highest of highs, lowest of lows, you know, I talk about, I never take a loss. Uh, lessons learned no matter what. I'm, I'm always going to learn something, whether it be a positive or a negative. And, and that's the way I, you continue to grow for everything, not just within sports, but within life. For sure. And you do do that every day, man. I, and I keep saying that and it sounds repetitive, but it is, it's true. And I get to witness it. And I think I'm very blessed for that. And a lot of people don't get to see that. And I've seen so much growth in you just in a few years that we've done stuff together. Right. Cause I watched as you really entered this industry as a whole. And uh, from that point to where you're at today, it's, day and night and you've been able to do some of these you know really iconic um, brand partnerships and and different deals with companies that you know people only dream of working with and now you're doing that on a regular basis so that's been absolutely incredible but I think you know a lot of people when they jump into that industry into the sports industry in particular in the entertainment industry everyone has an expectation right and you think yep. it's something but it's certainly something else than you uh tend to expect um how have those expectations been for you overall is, is it what you've expected it to be and if so or or if not you know in what ways i think you know for expectation wise i always expected it to be hard i never expected this to be easy um and i think that might have what drove me to it even more right people telling me no telling me i can't do it telling me you know can't sign big players can't work with big players you know that's what drove me right it's just that people are trying to tell me I can't do something that's going to make me want to do it even more. Right. I want, I want to prove people wrong, but I want to prove all the people that got my back. Right. You know, there's a lot of people that sacrificed many things for letting me to continue to grow and, and pursue my life dreams. Right. And to go into this space. So I think for me, that's been the, the biggest way. And just like, you know, I go back to being authentic and, and surrounding myself around the right people and, and continuing to learn. Right. You know, just, when it comes to the expectations, I knew as I first started, there was so much more I could learn, you know, even if I'm, you know, I'm doing good things, I'm making things happen, and, you know, that, that are above the, above the means. But when I, when I knew, like I had it, there was different parts of the game that I needed to learn, man. And, and that's, and that's why I, I, you know, I, I'm, I had no ego involved, right. You know, my, as long as the players are taken care of and the guys, you know, they're not even players, man, they're, they're people just like me and you. So as long as they're taken care of and, and they're happy with whatever it is that I help put, put together for them, you know, that's what makes me the most satisfied, right? You know, just to be able to, to help transition, make things easy for these guys as they're going through their parts of their career. And I'm with you on that. I mean, a big part of this, and I think for both of us, has always been what's behind the face mask and what's behind, like, you know, that particular athlete. Like, who, what do you, who are you? What do you stand for? Um, what are some things you enjoy in life? Like, let's start to dive into this and divest into it um, so that we can explore these different methods other than just being on the football field um, or whatever sport that may be, but for us in particular on the football field. So 
I love how you've been attacking that from, from day one. That's something that stood out about you instantly compared to most people. As you know now, Austin, being in the position you are as you know the director of athlete partnerships and, and marketing, you get emails all the time about people asking for different roles and internships or ways to get involved and stuff. And you know, a lot of people have that same singular focus. Why do you want to get into sports? Oh, because it looks cool, or I want to make a lot of money or whatever. That was never your objective. And that was never your response. Anytime that you and I had a conversation, it was like, and it was, and the thing that stuck out is it was always what I believe too. It's like coming into the industry to help change the industry. And I, I think that was a big part of it for, uh, for both of us and why we connected so quickly. But now after being in the industry for as long as you've been in it, especially these last two to three years where so much stuff has come up, you know, we had COVID come in and, and kind of disrupt everything. What's been the biggest changes that you've noticed in the sports marketing industry in particular? I think just the, the knowledge that other people, everybody got, you know what I mean? It's just, there's different ways to bring value to different players, right? You know, you know, me and you preach it all the time, you know, not, not every partnership is right for, for every player. You know, the, the deals we say no to are just as important as the deals that we say yes to, you know what I mean? And so when it comes to that, it's just really finding like the right fit for each guy, you know, I like just, you mentioned, you know, learning about these guys behind the face mask. And, and that's what I pride myself on too. When I'm working with anybody that we work with, you know, I, I really try to get to know you as a person. Cause if I don't know you as a person, how am I going to mark, how am I going to expand your brand and, and let you grow towards different things you want to be a part of away from the game. If I really don't take the time to sit there and get to know you man to man, face to face. Right. Cause you know, we, at the end of the day, once you get there, we all know you can play ball. But there's also a reality of things of the market, right? You know, the, the people aren't as open to doing as many partnerships for just a regular guy because you're in the NFL. So that's where, from our side is, let's find a way to make it creative, right? Let's, let's, let's push these guys from a whole different light based off their experiences, their organic interests. You know, what, what different ways we can do than just something standard, right? It's just like you say, we want to disrupt this industry. We want to make things different. We want to be a creative group. So that that's how we do it, man. And and I think that's the best way because, you know, money money is great and all, you know what I mean? Money money's going to come and go, right? But for these guys, being, having these guys be a part of this and want to be a part of the marketing side and, and be a part of these calls, learn the brand, you know, learn how this all operates as well. I think that's what makes us stand out. You know, we really care to take the time to let them know the difference in values, why we're saying yes to something, why we're saying no to something. Right. Because at the end of the day, our best, our biggest interest and is protecting the player and their brand and their value, but getting the most out of their value. Right. So I think, you know, just being able to go at it that way, you know, really having that organic care to know what these guys like and what they want to get involved with and then taking that and running with it and see using our network, using our connections that way to try to plug different plays in. And then as soon as the thing is time is ready, we say hut. Right. And then now we got it all in motion. Yeah, I mean, the biggest the biggest pieces of this is education and transparency. And I think that's really where a lot of people lack because people try to hide stuff for selfish reasons. But for us, we're like, hey, let's be transparent to the point where we're educating our clients because if they're able to understand it, then it makes sense across the board. There's no questions asked. Um, we're not trying to keep anything from you. We're just going to really do it openly to a point where we hope one day you're able to do this on your own, essentially, right? And kind of take that with you. So going to the process of marketing an athlete, you mentioned getting to know the athlete and trying to build those pillars. Can you walk someone through kind of what that looks like? Just someone has never done it before, right? Let's just say... I. Use me as an example, Austin. I'm a high school student right now. I have no idea what it looks like to market an athlete. Like, what are your first couple of steps if you're talking to me to try to show me how to do what you do without giving away, you know, the, the uh, Specs Curry little secret sauce? Oh, man. So I think that the biggest thing is I go back to is, number one, the transparency, for sure. And, and then number two is, again, when it gets to organically know who you're working with. You know, when you – I really – focus on building that organic relationship i want the guys the people to be comfortable with me explain what their their interests are and, and that's how you start steamrolling things right we start you know getting different types of ideas what brands are you guys using every day what what body wash you use what toothpaste you use what clothing brand are you wearing on the daily 
You know, if it comes for bigger brands, bigger players, are you do you feel more comfortable in a Nike cleat or an Adidas cleat, right? You know, and, and all that, getting to know those things and those organic interests, when we now take those to different brands and our contacts within our network, it makes it easier to pitch them, right? Because again, we, we're big also on, from the brand side, we want it to be mutual beneficial, you know? And, and I think that's what helped, has helped us you know, really keep our contacts, keep our network of having a strong base of people that want to, you know, work with our clients, whether they might be the biggest client or the, or not that big of a client, but because of how we're able to bring a creative side out of them. Right. So that's like how my process usually goes is really get to know who I'm working with. And then from there we plug, we make game plans. We talk, we go back and forth. I want to sit there and have a conversation with you about ideas. I'm thinking, for your, whether it be your nonprofit or your charity or an event or how we're going to get connected to this brand by doing this, right? I want to sit there and have that, that dialect with you. I want you to tell me your opinion on it. If you don't like what my idea is, then, then we scratch it. Because at the end of the day, we, where people misconstrue this business is they think the players work for us. You know, we work for the players. We work for them. So for me, I just like to be super on point, super transparent. I want you to be a part of this because you see the guys that are really killing it, right? On the on the off the field marketing, it's the guys that want to be a part of it. It's the guys that want to sit there with their marketing rep on the different calls. They want to be the guys to sit there and talk about different ideas and interests on how, you know, I have this idea to grow my brand in the gaming space. So different things I'm going to do on streaming, different things on that. So, you know, being able to take all those and then wrap it around, put our own little touch on it, it's only going to make things easier as we as we continue to work because the player's going to be happy because they're going to be interested in actually showing up and doing the work that's involved with the brand partnership. And the brands are going to be happy because it's not just someone that wants to per se just take their money, right? They want to be a part and continue to grow from both sides. So pushing that type of mindset to the guys of, as I'm building that up, and it takes time, man. You know, it takes time. Not everybody is going to, you know, come out of high school, get to college and, and they're ready to rock, right? They're not going to get all these huge deals, you know, maybe a quarterback, wide receiver, star player. But, and the reality is not everybody's going to be like that. And not everybody might not get paid, but there's different ways to bring value and, and help you out, right? You know, it's just some simple, like, like product exchanges, but for things that you're using, like dog food for guys that got pets, right? or all the water, right? If you want to spend, think about it, you go to the gas station, you spend $3 on a water. Why would you have to do it? Now think about as an athlete, how much water you drink a day. Now we get you plugged up with cases and cases and cases of water. It might not, for that certain brand, might not be getting money off that, but you're in a way, you're saving money. We're helping making things easy for you. You know, you, you might be a smaller level player, but you're big enough where a company, a dog company might want to give you credit to their store, help you, you know, take care of your dog, take care of your thing until that, until you progress into the point where, okay, I've built my brand, I've built my value, I'm doing my thing on the field. Now I'm known by everybody. I'm a starter, I'm grokking it. But it's just knowing that everybody's path is different. No one's gonna have the same path. No one, not everybody's gonna get the same type of deals. And not everybody's value is the same. But it's taking each individual and just literally putting out to the brand who that person is in their own unique way. And then from there, we just try to make something happen. Man, I love how you talk about the relationship aspect, right? Because you and I talk about it all the time. Networking is everything in this industry. It's not about who you know, it's about who knows you. But people, I think a lot of times they think of, you know, the relationship as singular, where it's just between us and our clients, not between us and the companies. And a few episodes ago, I had Frank Mahar on here from Genesco Sports Enterprises, Austin, who you know. And, you know, Frank controls some of the biggest brands in the NFL as, as NFL uh, sponsors, you know, Pepsi and Free Delay, American Airlines, et cetera, Campbell Soup. And Frank deals with different representatives and different, you know, athletes on a, on a daily basis. And one of the things he mentioned on this show was how important having that relationship is, you know, with, with somebody separate from just a business transaction. And there are certain agents out there where if he's looking at an athlete, for example, 
he may say, oh, man, I really want to utilize this athlete for this partnership. And he'll look up and see who the agent is and say, man, we've had bad dealings in the past. We don't really have that relationship. I'm going to see if we could pivot to someone else in a nutshell. Whereas those that he has personal relationships or just good relationships in general that have done good business with him. It's a lot easier just to pick up that phone and say, let's get this done. Let's get it done quickly. And as you know, Austin, we've done tons of business with them over the years um, on the regular. And, and it's been a blessing because it is that mutual partnership where, where they benefit from it. It's easy. It's smooth. And we benefit from it because our clients are happy and they're doing, you know, making some money on the side and doing these cool partnerships. But now the industry's changed, man, because you know, we have these different partnerships that everyone's trying to do in the NFL, but now the floodgates have opened up with NIL, right? Name, image, and likeness. And you're involved with that too. You know, you and I have conversations about NIL every single day. It's a big part of recruiting now as well. Um, even though agents don't want to talk about it, it is. And you almost have to do some of those partnerships to build the relationship nowadays. How have you seen this transition of NIL come in especially with these brand partnerships, right? Because there's money to be made out there for, for both college and pro players. I think right now, especially in the short term, term and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Austin, and what you've seen too, but NIL is just this buzzword that everybody wants to throw out and use. Really all it is is athlete marketing just for college athletes that have remaining eligibility, in my opinion. Uh, nothing, you're not reinventing the wheel, so to speak. But because mm -hmm. it's such a buzzword that people want to use, Companies are more willing to do partnerships, especially local companies in those college towns. What have you seen from it? Like, what are your experiences been? Like, what do you think of NIL in general? I think NIL, number one, is a, it's a great opportunity, right, for all these guys, you know. And, and I go back to, remember, like, what I said before, you know, for the brand partnerships, like I said, reality is not everybody's going to get paid, right? Not everybody is the star quarterback of the, you know, the SEC school, right? But it's from our side, our end. And that goes back to building that relationship with the kids and knowing what are things, what's going to make it easier for these guys to utilize their brand NIL to make it easier as they're going through the football season, as they're going through their college career, as they're also going back to class, you know, on, on the side, you know, cause they still, they're student athletes, student comes first. So it's however we could utilize these brand partnerships to make it a creative way and easier on these guys back. It makes it fun, man, because it also, in a way, it preps them, right? It starts to prep these guys for when they go to that next level. Because before, over the last, you know, before the last two years, this was never a thing. You know, these guys, they have this self, you know, they have a, an idea in their head where, you know, as soon as I make it to the NFL, I'm going to start making tons of money off the field, this, that, and the third. But then I think with NIL, you can kind of see the reality of that, right? But it also gives us an opportunity to build that, build them up, build their value up and show different opportunities and show brands when they do make it to the next level. Look what we did back at NIL, right? You know, look at this creative way we, we figured out how to tie in the Boys and Girls Club, different types of clothing lines and, you know, different types of charitable causes and community relations that also show the light of, it, of the athlete, right? It shows them as a per person. And I think that's when it's been the most you know, beneficial and the, the projects I personally love to work on the most is the ones that we tie in that community outreach, right? And touching these local markets and regional markets because, you know, even for the college kids, you know, touching the, the youth, the generations below them, that's, that's the main factor, right? So for NIL, I feel like it's just opened up so many opportunities to continue to, to build that brand of yourself and, and continue to learn as being a businessman. Right, because you're once you make it as a professional, you're also a businessman yourself. The game is a business, the league is a business. So, being able to teach from that side and show how things work, I think has been a blessing, and and not just for us, but for the for the kids alone, right? You know, the and and being able to help their families, and you know, you reach yourself to the point where you're a big enough player, and where that money's coming in, right? You you know, you could do different opportunities now, and and now you don't have to worry about as much of everything going on at home, right? Especially back in your hometown, if you're, you know, thousands of miles away for college, your family's back in across the country struggling still, but now you can kind of use your brand and start building things up, make it easier for them too. You know, make a couple, couple hundred, a couple thousand here, a couple hundred there. 
sending that back home to mama or keeping it for yourself so mama don't got to take care of you as much because she got you she got your brother and sister at the house you know what i mean so i think that's where it's been amazing to just see the help it's it's had and for all the guys and their families as they're progressing through this right and, and i think it's still so vague too to be honest you know i think there's still a lot to learn and there's there's a they're like you know there's gonna be a lot of ups and a lot of downs to be honest, when it comes to NIO, they're gonna have people blowing smoke, telling you one thing and not be transparent about the value that you personally have. And then I think that's where sometimes it could cause a problem, you know, especially schools might wanna buy kids, but at the end of the day, they wanna buy a kid, you know, good for that kid because he probably worked his butt off his whole life to make himself that skillful. So you can't knock it either, but there's always a creative way to do things now and I think it builds them up for the long run. It's a long, it's a long game, right? And I think us being able to start early with the collegiate athletes is, is only going to help build that relationship, number one, when it comes to transitioning into the, into the NFL. But for them as well, that's the biggest thing. And you said you talk about being creative too. And that's something that, you know, I've always admired about you, Austin, is that you like to think outside the box. And one particular area of this that you've really introduced me to, and you know, you and I just actually went to a meeting on this too, is the video game space. You know, at first I didn't really know a whole lot about it. It's something that you've been tapped into for a little while. Actually, your university that you went to, weren't they one of the first in the country to offer scholarships for esports and gaming and stuff? So can you talk a little bit about just the transition of of video games, um, especially in the athlete representation space, right? Where you see it now in the marketing realm where more and more of these individuals are trying to get involved off the field to create these new streams of revenue with this being one. Yeah, hundred percent, man. I think it just really, what it comes down to is for me, it's like these guys, when they're not at practice, you know, they're all, like I said, they're just like us, man. You know, we want to go play video games after, you know, after practice, after school, after work, just, you know, get our minds off of everything else, right. Connect with our friends that might be at different colleges or back at home. You know, so it's like, for me, I saw it as they're going to sit there and play on the game for three, four hours, right? Why not utilize that? Why, why not try to make some additional revenue if you're going to be doing it anyways? So, you know, when the esports all started to blow up in the business of, of professional gaming, you know, it was perfect because all the guys in the league are playing games, but all the gamers, you know, like you think that the the so-called, you know, maybe non-athletic guys that just play video games all day, but they, that's a sport to them. They're crushing it. And they, they, they'd like to play with these professional athletes just as much as the professional athletes want to go and rock with them. Right. You know, I, I know tons of guys that play with just random streamers that they met playing Call of Duty or, or Fortnite or whatnot. And, and they haven't ever even met, but those guys are pro gamers. And now we're just kind of utilizing their own little, brand and community of fans and now we're tapping in adding it all into one umbrella and i think for the gaming you know it just the space is still so new but these guys are just so organically involved it's it's a lot easier to push some different things on partnership wise right and whether it be you know paid opportunities activations community relations you know we've been talking about doing some type of digital literacy with different clubs and professional teams and you know it just I think it's an awesome way to bridge that gap between pro athlete and fan, right? Not only fan, but just regular people again. Like I said, like I keep going back to that because, you know, the guys, these, these players, they're not an entity, you know? They're, they're a person like you and I. And being creative with that type of partnership of something that they're already going to do no matter what, it was like a no-brainer for me to try to get them involved and plugged in with different brands all over the country whether it be a headset company, a company that sends accessories for your games, the game, the video games that they play themselves, right? Get them involved in different tournaments. You could tie in charity. You, so it's just a whole complete different avenue that for the player, for the people, it's just such an organic thing to do that it makes it so much more fun to utilize that. It really is. And I think you're seeing more and more of it now. And I think we're still at the infancy, like infancy stage of it too. I mean, even just the meeting we had recently, you could really tell that people are really interested in doing more and 
and everybody loves pairing companies with athletes. It, it just adds value. Football right now really rules America. Um, I mean, you look at just the preseason stats alone where you have, you know, the Hall of Fame game outnumbering game three of the NBA finals this year. And that's a preseason game where a lot of starters did not play in. So you're starting to see more and more of that. And I think it's going to carry over into this space a little bit more as well, especially because it's so organic, like you mentioned. Um, last question, Austin. Got to wrap it on this one. But this is a very, very important question, especially for all the viewers out there that are just curious about how to get where you're at now, right? So any advice that you would have just for somebody out there right now, whether they're in high school, college, or even done with college that says, hey, look, I want to work in this industry, but I don't know where to start. What tips would you give them just based off of your experiences? I think number one, do your research, right? If you want to get in this space, you know, I really believe that researching the people around you, look within your network, your connections, and, and just put yourself out there, man. Don't be afraid to, because of whatever your status is in the world that you can't do it either. You know, like for me, when I, when I got, when I got to college, the guy I learned, one of my mentors, Steve Tenzilli, he represented Ryan Clark, Willie Parker. He had his own sports marketing firm in Pittsburgh before he created the program at my college. You know, I was blessed enough in my intro class that he, that he had to sub in, right? My professor, something happened. My, so he had to come in, sub in. He always talked to upperclassmen. I walked right up to him right after class. Didn't care if I looked like the teacher's pet. To my other teammates that I played ball with in college, didn't care if he said yes or if he just blew me off. But I went right up to him and told him, you know, I came here to play ball, but also I to be a student, I, I researched you, I learned from you, I want to learn everything you have to offer, right? And putting yourself in those type of rooms and that situation, he never forgot that. I told him, I said, you did, you've been an agent, I want to be an agent, I want to take everything you have to offer, and I want to transition that in my own life. And so for me, it was just not being scared to take that first step, right? You know, so many guy, kids would have just been like, man, I can't, I can't walk out to the teacher. I ain't going to be a teacher's pet. You know what I mean? But it's like, you know what? I don't even care because I just don't. <laughs> I, I want to focus on me. I want to grow myself. And, and that's what it comes down to because no one's going to have you like you have. Me. And, and I think for anybody that wants to just get into this space is to A, also just have that that personality that I want to, and also that cares about the people. And that's, that's my big thing. Just cares about the people, continue to grow and, ex you know, appreciate the grind, man. Cause this is not an easy business, but if you're willing to appreciate that grind and, and put an ego to the side, learn it, not be scared to take a risk, you know, ask a question, go up, reach out to somebody, go on LinkedIn, go on the phone, go on Twitter, go on Instagram, whatever you see people that come across your way, feel free to reach out. Worst they're going to do is tell you no. It's all right. Then I'm going to move on to the next one. Right. So it's, that's the biggest thing for me, I think, is the getting yourself in there is just, you got to apply yourself because nothing is ever going to be handed to you. You got to, you got to make yourself different, make yourself unique. But again, the, the hardest step is step one, doing it. You got to do it. You got to just take it all out the way and just put yourself out there for best or for the worst. You know what I mean? And, and from there on out, God's going to take it the way he wants to take it. He got a plan for everybody. And you just got to trust that process and just ride the wave, right? You know, whatever it may be, it's going to be bumpy. It's going to be smooth. You never know what's going to happen. And, and just to be able to accept that, that was a big thing for me. And, and again, just applying myself. I put myself in those rooms, right? I didn't care if I was going and being an intern to start out, making zero money, no opportunity, but I could sit there and go grab people coffee. I'll just sit there and follow people around. You know, I didn't care, but I'm sitting there. I'm bringing things around. I'm not doing much. And, but I'm just soaking all the knowledge around. Right. I, just, I think back about the first time you and I connected um, at the NFL combine and me and you doing a bunch of our, our initial work together. And I remember just following, following you around and just watching how everything's being operated when, you know, we're with guys like Dan Marino, who's such a hall of famer, you know, big presence of an athlete. You got to be on point from all aspects, even you got to be on point because you're a representation of them as well. So for me, I was just sitting back, analyzing, watching how everybody operates and, and just being grateful. I was just a fly in the wall, man. Take, take every, anything I heard, 
I kept it in, just locked it in the safe. You know what I mean? And eventually that thing's gonna explode for me as well. And I was gonna utilize those, but I was always gonna put myself in a spot where I'm gonna learn no matter what. Didn't care, no ego involved. That's the best way to do it. So what was it like for you, Austin? I know that was the last question, but I gotta ask this one too. What was it like for you being a South Florida guy meeting Dan for the first time when we were at the combine? Oh man, it was crazy. Cause you know, for me, South Florida, Broward County, you know, Dolphin, Miami, everything, man, you know, growing up, but it was just like, for me, it was like, wow, I'm grateful. Right. You know, but at the end of the day, I also think about it. Like, I know he's a man, he's a person just like me. So I, I wasn't going to act any different either. You know, as much as I wanted, you know, I might've been screaming inside, like, yo, this is the craziest thing ever, man. But the reality, I just knew I, I was in such a, I was so blessed to just even be in there again, go be it, getting put in that room. And, and just for that, it was just like, a like, wow, I'm here. Right. I, I made it in here. I'm in here. Now it's going to be hard to get me out of here. Right. And, and I think that was the biggest thing. It's like, if I, I made myself in, in the same room with a guy like that and that stature and that group around me, grandparents, mom, dad, everybody rooting for it. And I, I just couldn't do anything but be blessed for real and and just accept that journey and be me. Hopefully he liked me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sharing chicken wings off the same plate, just chilling, just being guys, just talking. And, and I think that was just such a blessing for me to see too, man. Because even the highest of highs of people, highest caliber of an athlete, being able to see him, how he interacts with us and how it is too, man. It's just like we're, we're with the boys, man. And, and that's what I love, man. It's just like, wow, this is, this is really how it is. But then seeing how, how the business goes and how, how he can be drawn in so many different ways and everything he's doing is, is in a microscope, you know, the fishbowl effect, even what we're doing. Everybody could see us on the outside looking and watching every move. So being able to just learn how to move that way around a guy like that, especially my hometown, I couldn't be, couldn't be more grateful. Amen to that, brother. Well, hey, appreciate you coming on. Appreciate you sharing some knowledge, especially dropping those gems there at the end, just walking through those steps and, and putting yourself out of that comfort zone, right, to, to really take those next steps to get to the next level, something that you've done. I'm so just blessed to be working with you um, side by side every day. Just doing the stuff that we do, man. I'm honored, and uh, I'm looking forward to you now joining the podcast. I'm excited to have, uh, you know, my right hand man. You know, two of us just doing what we do, sharing some knowledge, and hopefully making a difference along the way. So, Austin, thank you so much, brother. Man, I appreciate you, Sam. I look forward to this continue this growth of this podcast, co-hosting with you, bringing bringing some fun to the, you know, to everything, and just <laughs> bouncing our dynamics off of each other, and 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 continue to grow this space, man. And, and, you know, bring our knowledge any way we can to the people that listen in. And, you know, that's it's going to be a blessing. I couldn't be more excited.